Hello and welcome to session 18 of our Series 7 exam overviews, brought to you by Passing Score, where you can get more help on your exam prep at PassingScoreFinance.com. In this video, we'll be going over the second part of our Muni section. There was a lot to cover in this area. And one of the key things that we saw with Muni's is that, with some very few exceptions, the interest income on these bonds are tax exempt. So one thing we might want to know is what would a taxable investment have to yield to uh, be equivalent to our tax exempt muni bond? And so we have this calculation to do that called the tax, uh, taxable equivalent yield. And our example, we have a 7% muni yield uh, for someone with a 30% marginal tax rate. Now our taxable equivalent yield is personalized. It really depends on what your marginal tax rate is. So it could be different for each type of investor. We take that 7% yield, uh, we divide by 100% minus the 30% marginal tax, and we get a 10% taxable yield. So that's what uh, any other investment, a stock or bond, would have to yield to, uh, to have the same return as our tax exempt uh, 7% return on our muni bond. Uh, for certain tax exempt investors, uh, there's no benefit, so they would take the 10% uh, or even 7.5% taxable investment uh, since they don't pay any taxes anyway. This might be a charity or foundation, something like that. Uh, but for the rest of us that pay taxes, uh, we're going to want to know, uh, be able to compare apples to apples when looking at investments. Uh, and comparing what the yield on a muni would be uh, compared to any other type of investments. Now, taking that uh, calculation on the flip side of that is finding out what a tax exempt um, uh, investment muni would have to be to equate uh, 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 a taxable investment that we have in mind. In this case, we have a 5% investment and we want to find out how much a muni uh, bond would have to yield to equate that 5% taxable investment. So we take our 5% times 100% minus our marginal tax rate of 30% and we get 3.5%. So now we can compare our 5% investment with our tax exempt 3.5% investment and find out that uh, that's the bar that the tax exempt uh, investment would have to pass to uh, to be at least equal to our taxable investments. Now let's look at the market a little bit and uh, the muni trading uh, on the OTC market. Uh, let's look at some of the uh, resources available. First of all, there's brokers brokers. Uh, these are brokers who only deal with banks and brokerages. They provide information services through wire services uh, to those types of investors and they uh, trade based on notifying the highest bidder at the end of each day. We have something called the Bond Buyer, which is a daily paper uh, which provides sales information and news on the Muni market, and Munifax, a wire service which again provides market information. Uh, there's the bond buyer indicators that are commonly used, uh, and a couple of these are telling us how the supply and demand balance is and what's coming online. Uh, we have a 30-day visible supply, which is uh, uh, any issuances coming to market in the next 30 days, uh, with maturities of at least 13 months. There's the bond buyer placement ratio, which is giving us an idea of our supply and demand balance, and this is compiled weekly. And then the 20 bond index, which gives us a look at 20 general obligation bonds. And these are 20 years and with an average rating of AA. In addition, we have an 11 bond index uh, with a rating of AA plus. And to focus a bit on the revenue bonds as well, we have the revenue bond index. And these are 25 revenue bonds with maturities of 30 days, 30 years, I should say, uh, with ratings of at least A plus. Uh, an OTC buyer has the right to certain disclosures. Uh, among them is the official statement, the underwriting spread, uh, and importantly, uh, a disclosure if the broker dealer they're working with underwrote the issue uh, and has a financial advisory relationship with uh, the issuer. 
so we'll need to know if there's any potential bias uh, uh, by the broker dealer as well. Uh, Muni settlements uh, have certain terms they need to meet to make good settlements. Uh, the certificate has to be in good physical condition. Uh, and if it's a bearer bond, has to include all the unpaid coupons. Uh, we have to have a legal opinion. The denominations are $1,000 or $5,000. The bond has not to have been called. And there needs to be proper assignment for registered securities. The Muni underwriting has certain disclosures and their, their role is in the pricing of the uh, securities. Uh, to, they provide an intermediary, intermediary service, uh, getting those bonds out into the public, marketing them, uh, possibly structuring the financing, and their um, uh, commission is uh, in the, the form of a spread between what they're uh, buying and selling the shares for. Uh, in addition, their investment recommendation must have a reasonable basis, so they can't appear to have any bias in their recommendation of shares that they're issuing uh, or helping to issue. Uh, and there's a requirement of accuracy, truthfulness, and truthfulness and completeness, which hopefully uh, is the case more these days. Uh, there's two types of offerings, uh, and one of them is mainly geared towards general obligation bonds, and that's our competitive sale here. Uh, underwriters are submit bond, uh, bids that meet uh, uh, published terms by the issuer and the best bid is awarded the contract. In a competitive sale, syndicates are formed through an underwriting agreement. And again, this is focused primarily on general obligation bonds. For revenue bonds, uh, these are handled mostly by negotiated sale. This uh, implies a, a closer advisory relationship in structuring and marketing the deal uh, because it's a more complicated structure or it's going into a volatile market. In a negotiated sale, syndicates are formed through a syndicate letter. There are certain disclosures that need to be made in our notice of sale, uh, and you should know these for the exam, so please take a good look and memorize these. Uh, an important one here is a legal opinion. And our legal opinion uh, uh, examines the legal authority of the issuer to uh, issue the bonds, uh, ensures that they've followed all legal procedures, uh, gives an opinion on their tax exemption of those interest income uh, payments, which is important for uh, these types of investors, and looks at the source of the interest and principal payments that uh, they have a low or a high probability of making those payments. An unqualified legal opinion means that they haven't found any issues in these four areas. A qualified legal opinion means that there's some doubts, there might be some risk in, in one of those areas that they're not sure about. Now, when we're making this issuance, we have something similar to what we saw before in that um, a tombstone advertising, advertisement needs to be done for a new issuance, just like we saw with other types of issuances. This is a black border and heavy black print ad, which has this basic uh, information uh, about the issuance. And again, you should know these by heart. This is something that uh, can easily be tested on the exam. Uh, we have Muni competitive bids, uh, and, and, uh, and uh, this is uh, what should be disclosed um, uh, as far as the interest costs uh, when, uh, when the issuance is being made. Uh, we have the net interest cost or the real interest cost uh, of the Muni, there are any reoffering yields that the underwriting uh, underwriter will offer and a complete reoffering scale by the underwriter or syndicate that uh, will be bringing the issue to market. Uh, there's different types of orders as well with a new issuance. We have pre-sale orders and these are orders placed before the syndicate has access to them. We have group net orders, uh, designated orders which are non-syndicate uh, orders, and member orders in which one member takes the complete takedown. Uh, on those particular shares. The MSRB uh, provides oversight for broker dealers, whether they're underwriters or making a market later on uh, for the Muni shares. 
Uh, and the MSRB is a, the Municipal uh, Securities Rulemaking Board. This is an SRO or a self-regulating organization uh, supervised under the auspices of the SEC. And these were initially created under the Securities Act's amendments of 1975. The MSRB doesn't have enforcement powers. They just set the rules uh, for the brokers and dealers uh, that the SEC and other regulatory bodies enforce. And again, this doesn't apply to the issuers, the cities, states, counties, um, school boards that are issuing these kinds of uh, uh, bonds uh, just for the broker dealers. Now, uh, the rules that are set apply to these syndicate managers when they're making uh, these issuances of new uh, securities or new uh, new muni bonds. And these are some of the rules they'll have to follow, including distributing profits within 30 days, uh, final settlements within uh, 60 days, uh, reporting on allocations given priority over member orders within two business days, and a good faith deposit in a competitive sale. Uh, and again, you should know these rules uh, uh, since, since these are key to uh, muni issuances. And for syndicate members, not, not the manager, uh, we have certain disclosure requirements that they need to make as well, including the identity of uh, members uh, uh, that the member has fulfilled a group order for, uh, disclosures of their accounts and uh, portfolios related to those members, um, anything that could uh, um, show that they haven't had any bias or preferential treatment or front running uh, by the syndicate member. Uh, we have a trading system to keep track of our muni trades. It's called the Real-Time Transaction Reporting System. This is focused on secondary trading, not the primary is issuances. And it's an MSRB system to record all of the muni transactions, which needs to be done within 15 minutes of the trade. Now, if you have less than 15 minutes before the end of the day, uh, it has to be, this disclosure has to be um, uh, uh, transacted within 15 minutes minutes of the next business day. And we have a system for our primary issuances as well. These are new security uh, transactions out into the market. And this system is called EMA. Again, this is an MSRB system uh, to document issuer and underwriting information to make sure uh, to disclose them to the public uh, and includes uh, continuing disclosures that uh, are required as well. Now, who is uh, trading these types of securities? These are municipal securities representatives, and they're anybody communi communicating with the public about munis, except the uh, securities principals and sales principals who are overseeing and uh, um, enforcing uh, and managing over uh, sales principals, or those people involved in the organization who are doing administrative uh, information. Now, our municipal re representatives have to either pass a Series 52 or a Series 7 exam and complete a 90-day apprenticeship, apprenticeship with a broker-dealer. Uh, they can act as a rep except uh, within that 90 days, except they can't be compensated uh, through commissions, through transaction basis, and they can't have direct contact with a public customer. If you don't pass your exam within those 90 days, you can be extended out to 180 days, uh, but you'll need to make sure you pass the exam within that time. And that's it for our, the second half of our Muni section. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me at john at passingscorefinance.com. And as always, good luck on your exam.